Have you heard of the term imposter syndrome? It is the feeling we get when we think we don't deserve what we have in our lives. Imposter syndrome is a form of an anxiety in which we find it hard to accept our achievements and success and downplay it as plain luck. It's a form of a self-doubt in which we create a bubble of fear of being exposed as a fraud. Now it may sound surprising but 70% of us experience imposter syndrome at some point in our lives and this is according to the International Journal of Behavior Science. And women tend to suffer much more than men, probably because we tend to feel guilty easily. I've experienced it when I went back to work after delivering my son. Today, looking back, I can say that it was part of the postnatal anxiety, but at that time, I was damn guilty about leaving my son at home and going to work. I'm sure a lot of us face this kind of a situation. But the worst thing is that I was on tenter hooks thinking that someone is going to point finger at me and say that I'm a fraud of a mom. I was overly guilty of it. It may sound ridiculous today, but at that time, in that anxiety, logic didn't matter. It was a self-limiting belief that comes up occasionally even today. It comes up when I catch myself avoiding something that I think I will fail at. For example, I had this goal last year that I wanted to write a book. I find it extremely funny that year and a half later, I'm still majorly procrastinating on it. And the funny thing is that I know I'm procrastinating on it and I continue to do it. So the kind of excuses I have is what if the topic isn't unique and uh, what if I say something, of course I will be talking about my experience, but what if someone says this is something that has already been said before because I don't read all the books, right? So I'm actually in my own head failing my book even before beginning to write it. Sounds ridiculous, isn't it? So what am I doing about it? I was frustrated when I looked at my goal during the review this month and I thought I should put, put together some way of overcoming this kind of anxiety, overcoming this self-limiting belief. And this is what I have come up with. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to discover my why all over again. Why do I want to write a book? Who is it intended to? What kind of message do I want to give, etc. Purpose is magical and I know it helped me move the most difficult of obstacles with ease earlier. And I know that it's going to help me this time as well. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. The second is to journal my what. What kind of fear is coming up within me? What are the excuses it's giving me? The emotions that is creating this obstacle for me. Being aware of my emotions, writing them down and reflecting on them has worked wonders for me before. It helps me find those triggers and control them. So that's the second thing that I will do. And now with purpose and fear in place, the next obvious step for me is to plan the how. How do I get started? How do I create accountability? How can I work with discipline? Mapping out possibilities and planning a course of action has always given me a sense of direction and I know that it's not just gets me excited to get started, it also gets me to get back on track if I fall off it. And so with this new plan in place, I'm excited to get started. But is that good enough for me to overcome this feeling permanently? I don't think so. Imposter syndrome, the anxiety feelings and the self-limiting beliefs are all habitual. They will come up once again and I will have to deal with it in a different way. But what is important here is that we are mindful of it. Being aware about how it is coming up, being aware of how you are responding to it can help you create a solution to overcome it. And I know I'm not alone. I'm in the elite company of Albert Einstein, Meryl Streep, Kate Winslet, Emma Stone and Sheryl Sandberg who have said to suffer imposter syndrome at some point in their lives. So I know I'm not alone. What about you? To check if you have imposter syndrome or not, I am providing a link to a test in the description below. This test is designed by one of the original psychologists behind this theory, Pauline Plans. I hope I pronounced that, pronounce that right. Do take the test and assess whether you are suffering from this self-limiting belief. 
If you need more help, do not hesitate to reach out to me. You may drop your question in the comment section below or you may reach out to me in any of the social media platforms that I'm in. Thank you so much for watching up until here. I hope you have a wonderful time. Stay strong, stay home, stay safe. And I'll see you next week.